Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. This video is going to be an overview of the median and ulnar nerves and all their branches and their functions. The most lateral of all these nerves is the radial nerve. We covered this in great detail in the previous video, so if you'd like more information on the radial nerve, go take a look at that video. You can find the link to it in the description here of this video. Here we're going to begin by talking about the ulnar nerve. This is the most medial of all three of these. It's going to run down the medial side of the forearm and eventually go into the hand on the side with the fifth digit, so the little finger or the digiti minimi. And the hand we'll be covering in the next video. Now in the forearm, the ulnar nerve only innervates two muscles. Those are flexor carpi ulnaris and flexor digitorum profundus. So over here on the right, you see flexor carpi ulnaris, and as the name suggests, it's going to participate in both wrist flexion and ulnar deviation. Now flexor digitorum profundus is interesting because it's innervated by two nerves depending on which half of the muscle you're looking at. So the ulnar nerve innervates the medial half of this muscle, so the side that's closest to the fifth digit. And overall, this muscle is going to allow flexion of digits two through five, at the metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal joints. However, because the ulnar nerve innervates the medial half of this muscles, the ulnar nerve is going to be mainly responsible for the flexion of digits four and five, some of three, but definitely not two. That's actually going to be down here, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. So only two muscles innervated by the ulnar nerve. Next, we'll move to the median nerve. The median nerve is, of course, in the middle. It's between the radial nerve and the ulnar nerve. You can see here that the median nerve is going to cross the elbow joint, and it's pretty much just going to run down the forearm lateral to the ulnar nerve, and it's going to enter the hand just like the ulnar nerve. Again, we'll be covering that in detail in the next video. Now, the median nerve gives off several direct motor branches to these muscles over here. But notice that the median nerve also gives off a very large major branch called the anterior interosseous nerve. This itself gives off motor branches to several muscles, and we'll come back to that and talk about that in a few minutes. But for now, let's look at the branches directly coming off of the median nerve. Those are motor branches going to these muscles right here in the forearm, pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, and flexor digitorum superficialis. So the first of these over here is pronator teres. As the name suggests, it's going to be mostly involved in radio ulnar pronation, but because it crosses the elbow joint, it can participate just a little bit in elbow flexion. Over here is flexor carpi radialis. It's mainly going to be involved in wrist flexion and also radial deviation, as the name suggests. The next muscle is palmaris longus, seen right here. It's really just going to be involved in wrist flexion. And then the last one, flexor digitorum superficialis, is involved in the flexion of all four digits except the thumb, two through five. And it does so at the metacarpophalangeal and proximal interphalangeal joints. Now, these are the only four muscles that are innervated by motor branches directly coming off the median nerve. But as we mentioned, the median nerve gives off this other major branch before it gets to the hand, and that's the anterior interosseous nerve. All other muscles here in the anterior forearm compartment are going to be innervated by this anterior interosseous nerve, and that's what we're going to look at right now. The first one is flexor pollicis longus, shown right here. The pollux is another term for the thumb, so this muscle is going to flex the thumb, and it's going to do so at the metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal joint, so just digit one. The second muscle over here is pronator quadratus. This is, of course, going to pronate the forearm, so it's going to be involved in radio ulnar pronation. And now we're back to this flexor digitorum profundus. Remember the medial half of this muscle is innervated by the ulnar nerve. The lateral half of it is innervated by the median nerve. And so again, overall, 
Flexor digitorum profundus allows flexion of digits two through five at the metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal joints. However, this half of the muscle is mainly going to be responsible for flexing digits two and three. Definitely two, which is the index finger, and three may have a little bit of shared function between the two halves. But in general, two and three are going to be controlled through this muscle via the median nerve, and digits four and five are going to be controlled by this muscle through the ulnar nerve. So hopefully this video gave you a good overview of the innervation of the muscles in the anterior compartment of the forearm. In the next video, we're going to take a look at these two nerves as they enter the hand, and we're going to see how the intrinsic hand muscles are innervated by them. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.